Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. This is Rune Spell Overture. This game comes to us from Dutch developer Mystic Box, and it normally retails for $10 on Steam. I picked it up during the winter sale for a steal of a price. Don't really recall what it was, but you know me and how cheap I am, so you know it was a good deal. But I also picked up a spare copy of the game during the Indie Face Kick Bundle. And so if during the course of the video you decide that Runespell Overture is the sort of game you might like to own, well keep your ears open because I will tell you exactly how you can win my extra copy. So Runespell Overture, what the hell is it? Well, to sum it up in just a couple of words, it is RPG Poker. That's pretty much what it is. It's RPG poker with some collectible card game elements thrown into the mix. So you play as this fellow here, the Changeling, and there's a bit of a backstory that we won't really go into. I've done several things here, several quests to try to get up to speed on how the game plays, and we are going to just jump right in and show you some of the features. First of all, love these character portraits. They are right out of a D&D &D handbook. That style is just right on. It's crisp. It's perfect. It's exactly what I would want out of an RPG like this. I love those character portraits. And this guy right here, you can just tell he's up to no good. And I've done some quests where I can already kind of... kind of see his turn coming. But eye patch, chin goatee... I mean, has anyone with a chin goatee ever done anything positive for society? Seriously. But this guy here, this, this amazing ginger, he's not as good as the ginger I have in my party. I'll show him to you in just a minute. But uh, this is town, or, or one of the towns, where you can gather up some quests, do some trading, and uh, stuff like that. These guys will talk your head off and your ear off if you really want them to. They'll tell you a lot of the backstory. Uh, this is sort of a mix of real locations and sort of co-opted folklore. They sort of do this take on the Beowulf Grendel story. Uh, it's a little bit obvious when the way they do it but uh you know it's it's thinly veiled if you will so again ccg meets poker with rpg elements uh how does that work well let's find somebody to fight oh here we go so these shields will be sort of just like your random encounters you have to hit them uh, to pass through to the next areas uh, this would be a quest that is waiting for me i'm a little less than confident about my ability to actually complete that. So let's go here to a random monster and you'll get a very quick impression of exactly how this works. So we're gonna get a chance to look at our inventory before we start. Here is my wonderfully ginger bearded man. Oh, bell breaker, you are amazing. So you have this inventory of cards. Uh, some of them are reusable. For instance, these two folks here, Bryn and Bellbreaker, these are both uh, usable whenever I can. Notice the infinity symbol. And uh, these cards down here have limited uses. This card actually has zero uses, so there's not a lot of point of actually having it. So let's take it out and let's put this fire strike in. So you're going to tweak your loadout as you go, and you'll notice that uh, when cards run out of uses, you still have them in your inventory. Uh, you just have to buy more uses from them from that shady trader in the town that we were in. And let's see, we have a mana shield, and I don't really have to worry about a mana shield. Although actually, this is a magic-based enemy, and she doesn't use f fear, so... All right, just thinking out loud. I'm going to switch this in because I know this enemy to be a magic user. In fact, it's one of these cloudborn nymphs or whatever the hell it is. So uh, yeah, we'll switch that in. Kind of just, you can tweak your builds to each individual fight. So uh, that's a really, really cool aspect of this game and you will start to really dig into that as you go forward. So when we enter the battle screen, you will see my, my badass looking changeling right here in all of his wonderful glory. And here is my enemy. Um, I was quote-unquote ambushed, so she went first. And quite simply, you're just making poker hands. You can steal cards from your enemy so long as they are not stacked. For instance, I cannot steal this jack, but I can steal this nine, and I think I will do that. You have this many moves in your turn, and that includes activating these cards, which I brought into play with me, and triggering attacks. So when you have a five-card stack, 
that constitutes a poker hand, you can attack and different poker hands will have different values. So you're going to keep your eyes open and you're going to try to find out exactly what you can do to maximize things. For instance, here I'm going to go with three of a kind. So right now I have three of a kind and that is a very good thing. I also have a couple of fours. Now he is probably going to steal my jack and my ace if he knows what's best for him and he did steal my ace, but not my jack. Okay. Whatever, you know, play it how you want to play it, computer. So again, here I'm looking to build poker hands. I will do some things that I probably wouldn't do if this was a full-on normal game, just to show you how things work, because that's the key here. I'm just trying to show you what the hell this game is all about. So I'm going to take these fours and I'm going to stack them on these nines to make a full house. That's going to give me a 15-point attack. You can see my enemies health right here. She has 80 health. You also see we both have these RP bars that are empty. When we attack or we are attacked, that bar will fill up. That bar is then used to cast these, which, oh look, these have 20 RP, 40 RP. Hmm, makes sense, huh? It's like they all planned it out this way and actually put some thought into this game, and indeed they really, really did. It has a good tutorial as well uh, to get you up to speed, and that was, uh, that was one of the points that I really, really liked. So I have this attack ready to go, but I also have one more move, so what do I want to do? Uh, if I survey the other side, he doesn't really have anything I would want except for this three. But honestly, if I'm planning to attack this turn so I only have one move left, uh, I really want to keep him from stealing this jack. So I'm going to put the jack on the three. That's sort of a throwaway for me. I'm, maybe I can build something out of this combination later, but maybe not. In fact, probably not. So once you've created a stack, you can't break it. You can move it but you can't break it. So let's go ahead and initiate that attack so you can see how combat works. Boom, just like that. Revealing an ace that he will probably take, and he did. Bastard. So you'll notice now the computer has a full house on her side. Uh, the actual value of the cards in your full house have no meaning whatsoever. The same with straights and all that stuff. You don't have that sort of balancing act that you would have if, if you and I in an actual poker game both put down full houses. Full houses? Yes. It would be, it would be, you know, whoever had the better actual hand, whoever had the higher high card sort of thing. But uh, in this case, doesn't really matter. So you'll notice that this chest has appeared, as I'm noticing that, and uh, for one pair you can open this chest and it, you will get some kind of a card. So if you are so inclined, you can make a pair like this and you can then finish this out with three trash cards. And then once you attack with it, you will, oh, there's another 10. Using her thunder spell. Now again, the reason that I brought this mana shield with me is because she uses magic. Right now her magic is on cooldown, so I'm going to wait another turn before I activate my uh, shield. And the shield will do uh, a lot to nullify the, uh, the magical attack of my enemy there, so I'm going to hang on to that. And let's see here. Let's stack up these queens. And threes, eights. Uh, eights there. And threes. And I could put that there for two pair. Hmm. If I was trying to win this game, that's definitely what I would do. But in all honesty, I am not. So... Let's put this seven here and let's win this chest. Just so you can see that in action. You notice I'm going to get a spell. In this case, it is Thunder with one use. Well, you know, that's cool. It goes into my inventory, but is not usable during the, the course of this particular game. All right, all right. What have we? More eights. Twos. They have some eights for me here. And I will move this ace here because, again, I don't want him taking that ace. I say him. I guess this is actually a female, but, you know, you know what I mean. All right, so let's go ahead and make this four of a kind. And let's see what we can do over here with our allies. Anything cool we can do. All right, well, Thunderstorm is going to be off cooldown, and she has some potential attacks that are going to be coming up next turn, so I am going to cast my 
Mana Shield, which will last for the designated amount of turns. In this case, it is five. So for five, oh no, excuse me, two. Uh, for, for two turns, I will have a Mana Shield, and that will reduce heavily her magic damage. So if she chooses to trigger that Thunderstorm, she will essentially waste it. And with our final move, let us observe the field. You'll probably want that jack. But I'm just going to bank on the fact that I can overwhelm her because she has far less life than me. So again, not playing optimally here. Not playing towards a winning strategy, if you were. And now she has enough, as you can see, to actually use her spell. And she will probably do that uh, either... If she's smart, I don't know how the AI is really programmed, she will wait until my shield is down. But generally speaking, the AI has not been that smart up until this point. So we're going to find out. All right, there we go. Building a nice full house here. I'll take that. They're going to grab that ace. But again, to me, it's not worth it because I think I can just overwhelm her. You notice now I have quite a bit of RP. In fact, I'm losing my shield this turn. You did see she used that, and my shield worked as it was intended and greatly reduced the incoming magic damage. So uh, I have uh, over 40 RP. And I'm going through a lot of this stuff really, really quick. I know, I, I know that I am, but this is just that sort of game. It's really dense, and I don't want this to be a 30-minute video. So now that I have over 45 RP, excuse me, I'm going to use my man, the ginger bearded Marvel, Mr. Hrodbrock Bellbreaker. And he is going to do some massive damage to this poor lady. There you have it. So we have her now down to 18 at the moment. That is excellent because I can do another 15 damage right here. And with one turn left, I believe we can put her away with my other ally, Bryn Burrowhand. Here we go. Just like that. And that is essentially the combat that you will go through in this game time and time again. It is interesting, it has a fun factor to it, uh, spoils of war dropping in there, you get cards at the end to add to your stash. Uh, so yeah, I mean the combat is solid, the visuals are good, one thing I would complain about is this game is essentially in uh, 4x3 aspect ratio, uh, and these little guys here are just permanent, uh, permanent widescreen sidebars. Uh, so you know, that's... Eh, I would love it if that was a little bit uh, less obvious, and I would, I would actually love it if this was widescreen format, but for whatever reason, it isn't. I do believe this was uh, developed in Unity, as far as I can tell from looking at the website, so I don't know why they would have chosen this aspect ratio, but for whatever reason that they did, you know, it is not so distracting that it takes me out of the game. Again, the combat is solid. You're going to get in there. You're going to do your poker turns every time. You're going to get through uh, each and every battle. Some enemies are going to be much more difficult than, the, than others because of what they're going to bring into the battle. And occasionally your, your allies will tell you a little bit about what you're going to face if you're facing something down. So you'll know a little bit ahead of time or, or a quest will warn you these guys use magic that steals your rune points or your rune power so you know make sure that you have a shield that can prevent that so the game itself i mean is is absolutely solid um, i love the ability to sit down in it and play a few games play a few hands if you will and uh, then just kind of move on about my business. Uh, the story is there and it brings everything together, but you can bounce around from point to point playing those repeatable battles and just building up your skills uh, and building up your actual points your, or your actual card base so that you can uh, make better decks or sideboards, if you will, the cards that you bring with you, the extra cards. So all in all, I think the system is very interesting. Uh, it really brings something new to the table. It really is sort of in that puzzle quest kind of, uh, kind of vein uh, where they are taking a fairly standard mechanic and attaching it as the combat in an RPG sort of setting. And I think they pull it off really, really well. I mean, as I've said, the art style is great. It's dead on with what you would expect it to be. The music is wonderful. Uh, uh, it really, really fits, and it is, I mean, it is, I believe it's licensed music, but it is 
dead on to exactly where you would expect it to be. I mean, so many of these, so many of these songs, I'm like, flashes of Lord of the Rings, flashes of, of, of any other Willow, any other fantasy movie with really great orchestral sound, and it's hitting all of those points, and, and it's doing it in a really great way. So we'll take one last peek at combat. This is a quest. You can see here, you will get Bryn, my, uh, my Norman ally, who is warning me here. You know, I can see four glowing guardian stones in the distance blocking our path. Yes, that does not look good indeed. And uh, this will give you a good chance to sort of see the dialogue. You can do these little dialogue options. I don't know how much of the effect they have. Obviously, in this case, we only have one uh, option, but you will occasionally have two. And it's usually nice option and jackass option. So you pick whichever one, I suppose, is more you. Uh, I haven't necessarily seen the characters react. I've picked some of both. And I haven't seen anything seem to change. Most of the conversations are circular. Oh, look, we have a quest. And so you will pick up quests at random like this, as well as in the town. So our uh, our quest is to talk to the scholar. So basically, they've cut me off from this combat uh, that I was going to undertake, and they're directing me back to town. So I guess this is a good opportunity, instead of showing you more combat, to show you a little bit of the actual interaction with NPCs. So let us talk to the scholar. Changeling, you're back. What news have you managed to get beyond the sacred gate? The scarred gate. That would be scarred. Hmm. And my only option is no, the path is blocked. And wow, that was pretty easy. <laughs> then this here makes more sense. Shows you a piece of paper. What is that? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And so forth and so on. These guys will talk, as I said, your ear, your head, uh, your genitalia, your fingers, your fingertips, your fingernails. They will talk every bit of your body into a small pile quivering on the floor. So uh, usually I just try to get through the stuff as quickly as possible while gleaning the essence of the story. And uh, that is an unfortunate thing. They actually do tell you a few times. Some of these people can be kind of talky, so you may want to skip these conversations. And I don't really know that skipping these conversations has any major impact. As you see, I still get to the quest. And, uh, man, he wants me to do a bunch of stuff. Great. So at this point, I have another quest to go out in the world and fight some more stuff. And here you can see we will, uh, we will have to go to each of these points and probably kill something and collect an item. So let's head over here, and as combat begins, we will uh, we will wrap things up. We are battling a rock. Lovely. Let me quick, take a quick check of our inventory here. We have a nice spell that we will want to equip, that thunderbolt that we picked up. And we also picked up another shield. So this would have been zero, but I actually picked up another charge for my shield, for my, uh, for my mana shield by defeating that Cloudborn that I faced in our first battle there. So, here we go. To the fight. To the battle. I shall kill you, sentient stone. So in this case, uh, I have the jump, so I'm getting to attack first. Getting to attack first is a big, big advantage, because you can really start to pick apart what your opponent has at his disposal. For instance, I'm going to take that king, and I am also going to move my three onto my other three. And just for giggles, I'm going to take his five as well. So I've managed to utilize several of his cards. And uh, if he doesn't, yeah, he didn't see, he didn't protect his king here. So he's basically giving that to me. All right, great. I'll take that. You know, he took my six. Bit of a loss, but in the end, whatever. And again, if I really want to get this battle moving, I can make a, uh, I can make a full house right now. And uh, I can get things started quick, so let's go ahead and do that. He's going to take that 6, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and hit him. Take that 15 damage, you awesome-looking rock, you. Oh, and we have a chest on the field again. It's just a single pair that I need in order to claim the contents of this chest. Many times I find that actually going after the chest is not really that wise. For instance, I have a pair of fives. I could stack three more garbage cards on it, but I would be better off if I make this into three of a kind. I can then make my kings, 
and he has some queens and fours and eights and so you know so here i'm faced with a decision what do i do i can move this over here to create my full house to attack next turn uh, or I could take his four or his eight. And this is the sort of decision process that you're going to go through uh, during combat. And I think that's a great thing to have that sort of uh, that sort of thought process. It's going to have to go into your gameplay. You notice he snatches two cards from me, a bit of a loss. But again, I'm just building towards my attacks. You may want to save up for massive attacks. You may want to just do these piddly little attacks like I've been doing. Uh, you know, you really want to build up your rune power because this is the thing that's really going to allow you to do the most damage. You know, for instance, Fire Strike and Thunder Strike, both of these spells have the ability to do a lot of damage. If you get lucky with Thunder Strike, you can really hit them hard, as well as my uh, Bell Breaker here with his amazing red beard. You know, he is going to hit pretty hard as well. So, you know, that those are good, good things that you want to have on your side. So doling out little little attacks early in the game to charge up for these, that's a strategy. And that's one of the interesting things about this game. Look through the you know, look through your options and create your gameplay. Man, five four five of a kind is a, I was gonna say four of a kind, but it's five of a kind. Damn you. Okay, so at this point, what should we do? Well, I could do that. Uh, we have four of a kind here, so if I wanted to go ahead and get an attack out, go ahead and just grab this 10, drop it here, and attack. And again, that's going to get me near that 40 mark, and that's really the place that I need to be to start unleashing my more powerful attacks. He hits me with something there. All right, so I think that's going to do it, guys. You've pretty much seen everything uh, that you need to see in order to be able to find out whether you like this game or not. Uh, it may, I mean, make your choice, but I've really enjoyed it. If you want my honest opinion on this game, I've had a hell of a fun time playing it. I've really, really enjoyed myself. Every minute of this game, even the learning process, was a, a wonderful experience. I mean, is it something that I'm going to play and play and play? Not really. Is it something that I'm going to play more because of the way that it's designed? Yes. If this were just a straight up poker game where I went against this other guy, this would probably get old in an hour. But because there's an extra layer of RPG elements and because you have the collectible card game element on the backside, it really starts to make things... Man, five turns? Jackass! It really starts to make things interesting when you can combine all these things together and you can really uh, create a, a new game. And this is great evidence of how uh, bits and pieces of other games can, can be used to evolve a new genre instead of creating one uh, from whole cloth. You know, you are essentially creating a, an amalgamation of genres here into this game and it's been a hell of an enjoyable experience for me. I would definitely recommend that you guys check this out. And if you're interested in trying to win this game, well, head on over to BigDaveIsCheap.com where you will find a topic about this game posted right there on the front page. You just need to comment with the word changeling. Here you can see it spelled out right here, changeling, just changeling. You can say changeling and Big Dave, you are amazing. And you can post that, that's cool. You can say Changeling and Big Dave, you are a jerk. And that's cool. You can also just post Changeling, whatever you want to do. At the end of the week, let's say Saturday, that's Saturday Eastern time in the current time continuum. So Nitro Mountain will have to remember to do this a day ahead of time. But uh, I'm sorry, Nitro, I love you, man. But I love giving you a hard time about living in the future. Uh, it's... Um, I will put something up, one of those countdowns that I put up on the page as to when the contest actually ends. But let's say you have until about Saturday to take advantage of this contest. Changeling, and you can win Room Spell from Mystic Box. All right, I am definitely on the downside of this battle at this point. So uh, let me try to come back here and uh, not die a horrible death to this rock. Because that would certainly be embarrassing. All right, guys, I'm sorry for this slightly longer video, but as you can see, this is the sort of thing that you just cannot explain in a short amount of time. I have been Big Dave, and as always, take it easy.